back there, Miss Moore up there, Brother Gary Oxley up there, and even Brother Jeff Lancaster, <laughs> maybe, that you were born, that you're here for such a time as this. And uh, it's the greatest day to be a Christian. It's the greatest day to be a servant of Jesus Christ. I mean, haven't we wanted to see the Bible come to life? I mean, haven't we wanted to see God do what he promised he would do? And this could be the generation that we see God do something like we've never seen God do before. And uh, I'm excited about what God's doing. Uh, you know that God's on the move when Satan is breathing out such threats against the church. And so God is not going to let his bride be abused or misused by the enemy. Amen? And uh, he's preparing us and he's going to get us ready for a great work. And so uh, it's the best thing to be part of. It's the only thing that I know that's going to be eternal. And that's the church of the living God. And you're part of that body. If you believe, repented, trusted Christ by faith, you're part of His body. And uh, He wants to use you. There's no big eyes and little U's. There's no big shots and little squirts. I heard a guy say, y'all ought to be shot. But um, there's no big people or small people. The ground's level at the foot of the cross. Amen? Amen. And uh, we're saved by the grace of God. The same blood that got me in gets you in. And it's the blood of Jesus. Let Jesus be the, the focus of your life. Get your eyes off everybody else. Get your, Look, this is a bad time to have your eyes on anybody. Uh, get your eyes on Jesus. and he'll, He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so you can trust Him. Amen? But I'm glad to be here with you, and I'm glad you're here with me. And uh, I think there was a song that said... Uh, uh, me sitting next to you ain't no place I'd rather be than you sitting next to me or something. But I know this. I think it's a, like a, maybe a Travis Tritt or Ben Steele or, or somebody. Ain't no place I'd rather be sitting next to you sitting next to me. Now that, I used to listen to that when I was a young kid down in the, the flatlands in Georgia. And uh, you can't go into Cracker Barrel without hearing that song every now and then. And uh, but listen, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Are you glad to be here, Brother George? I'm glad to be here. And by the way, that is my prune cake. And uh, it did, it, somebody took it today. I couldn't find it. Looked over this whole building. And I found it, praise the Lord. And uh, I found it back where Miss Janet's feet are. She had it hid back there. Uh, but that is a prune cake. Anybody ever had a prune cake? My goodness, I know what you're thinking. 
That should be for folks at the nursing home. But I'm telling you, a prune cake. There's just something about it. It's wonderful. I, 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 anyway, we might have to cut it tonight and have communion. Amen? All right. Well, then we're going to have a word of prayer. We're going to commit this time to the Lord. I want you to hear this. August the 9th. Don't miss August the 9th. If you know somebody that says this is their church and this is what they consider their home church, you, you remind them August the 9th is a very important day to be here. It's going to be an exciting time. Um, I've dropped some hints about that on Wednesday night. And uh, also, the evening. I'm very excited about Sunday night, August 9th, the evening service. I've got something very special God's put in my heart to get to present to you the message that night I know is from the Lord. Um, and so I don't miss that night. It's going to be a challenge. It's going to be encouraging. It's going to be very personal to you, personal to me. And I believe August the 9th will set the plow in the ground for the future of our ministry here. And uh, I believe we, we, I believe we're getting near the end, brothers. I believe that, sister. We're getting near the end. And uh, it's time to get both hands soldered to the plow. It's time to tell Ben and Jerry, step up, you. we got something to do for the Lord. It's time to plant some seed. It's time to work the field. It's time to see a harvest. And uh, there is a great falling away, but I believe there's a great reaping ahead of us. Amen? And uh, but listen, I need everybody to be in their place. Everybody to stay on course. Everybody to keep their nose to the grindstone and let God help you. Amen? Amen. All right, let's pray, and then we're going to worship. We're going to sing a little bit tonight. Amen? Yeah, is that the 19th? Next week, next Sunday morning, we're going to take up, I'm, I'm glad Brother Ben mentioned this, next Sunday morning after our regular offering, uh, we're going to take up a second offering just to help offset some expenses that we're going to have. We, we're putting new carpet in the sanctuary. We're putting new, uh, new floor out front. We're changing up some things in here. We've got some neat things coming that's going to, every time you come to this church, you're going to, you're going to know what our vision is. You, nobody will ever leave here and wonder what Capital City Baptist Church is focused on after August the 9th. There'll be no question about it. And um, so we're going to take up a special offering just to help offset the cost. We're not going to borrow any money. We're just going to trust the Lord and use with some funds we have in the bank. Trust the Lord with those things. Uh, we wanted to redo this whole building, but we just can't do that. Uh, but we're going to make the best about what we have. We're going we're gonna to really do something nice in here. So work day, uh, the 27th of July, we need some help. We're going to move these pews out of here. Uh, we're going to get this place ready. And uh, we're, 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 there'll have to be two Sundays, Brother Chuck, that we won't be able to meet in here. We'll have to meet in the cafeteria while we just get some things done up here. Uh, but uh, if you can help any this week, Brother Chuck has some things you can help do this week, possibly. So um, that special offering, if it's a dollar you can give, two dollars you can give, five dollars, just something just to help replenish what we're going to be using to get some things just kind of updated and cleaned up around here, all right? Next Sunday. All right, well, let's have a word of prayer, and we're going to worship. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for loving us. I thank you so much for Jesus. I thank you for the cross. Thank you so much for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And Jesus, we long to honor you. We long to see you. We want to be faithful to the task and the call that you have placed upon our lives. Dear God, let us not be the generation that drops the gospel ball. Let us not be the generation that goes to sleep and allows the enemy to, to run roughshod over us. God, but help us to stand. And when we've done all we can just to stand, and to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God, we pray you would give us souls for our labor. God, that you would encourage the church, strengthen the church. God, bring unity of mind, unity of heart, unity of purpose and direction. God, put us on the same page. Remove any confusion, God. Remove anything that would stumble or keep us, God, from moving forward together as one cohesive body sold out for Jesus Christ. Would you bless what we do? Would you close the doors that need to be closed and open the doors that need to be opened? God, would you guide our steps, teach us, God, how to walk in the straight and the narrow way. May your word be the guidepost. May your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God, we need you today. In Jesus we pray. Amen and amen.
one bed you sit next to me, y'all? Uh, a uh, little Travis Tripp. Oh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't listen to Kelly. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking back to the story. We were one meeting, and we were just having the online services. We come in here a couple Sundays, and there was pictures, photos of everybody just yes. posted on every yes. seat. There was yes. every seat. Your picture was there. So you had to be here to figure it out because that's when we all really self distance. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I like we do now. But anyhow, uh, <laughs> anyway, after I would play guitar, I would, I, I would never forget it. Eli sat right there. Rachel sat there. Uh, Robin sat back there where Jamie was. Travis would sit over there. And uh, Scott would sit right here. So after I would play, we would all self distance. So, I went back here and tried to find me a seat. And everybody had a picture there. Well, I sat about three or four seats behind Rachel. Pastor was preaching in a big way. And, you know, I always had my arm cocked over him. I had my arm around Missy. <laughs> 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 That's right. I said, I got to move. <laughs> <laughs> so I, got, so I went back and went, are you watching the <laughs> cut?
uh, on biblical ignorance. Really is what we need to do. Maybe we need to launch some more on biblical ignorance. We need to get back to the Word of God. That's what we need in our lives. If you have a copy of God's Word, we're going to be in Psalm chapter 92 tonight. Psalm chapter number 92 tonight is where we'll be. And uh, again, I want to say it's good to be here, good to be here. Um, brother, when you left this morning, I asked your wife if I offended you, but she said you got choked up. And so I always get nervous. I, I'm being funny. We had another couple that sits right behind her where the turkey is. Uh, what's her name that sits there uh, that just started coming? Uh, Teresa. Her and her husband left last week. I thought I said something to make them mad, and she just got sick. So whenever you, whenever you get up to leave, you need to call me and let me know that I didn't let you know, all right? Psalm 92. Psalm 92 is where we'll be. Uh, this afternoon, and uh, I want you, if you will, to stand up with me this evening as we reverence the reading of God's Word, Psalm 92, and we're going to look in verse number, let's start in verse number 7. The Bible says, when the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. Verse 9, for lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish, and all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. Verse number 10, this is where my heart is tonight. But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Father, I thank you that even though the wicked flourish and the wicked prosper, God, there is a remedy for the child of God. I'm glad today that when the wicked seem to be getting away with evil and prospering, with their wickedness, you declare that the people of God shall not be overshadowed they shall not be overlooked. They shall not be forgotten about. They shall not be utterly defeated. They may be cast down, but they will not be destroyed. And God, I'm thankful, God, today that we can hold our head high. And God, we can stand our ground and we can declare the Word of God. And we can worship You, God. And we can tell the world about a wonderful, lovely everlasting Savior that will save any man, woman, boy, or girl that will call upon the name of Jesus Christ. And God, I'm asking you, God, to raise us up as the church. I'm asking you, God, to anoint us with fresh oil. I'm asking you, God, to use us in these days of uncertainty, in these days of darkness, these days of confusion, and God, these days where wicked seems to be beneficial. I pray, God, you would help the church to still toe the line. Help the church to still walk in holiness. Help the church still believe the Word of God. Help the church still seek after righteousness. God, help us, God, not to lay aside our pursuit of holiness, but God, help us to uh, pursue it with joy and power. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to say tonight that oftentimes in the Bible there's pictures that God gives us as the reader so that we can even understand and we can make application. And uh, I'm going to just say tonight that as we look in verse number 10, I'm interested where he says, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. If there's anything that we need right now, it is a fresh anointing of the sweet Holy Ghost of God. If there's Amen. anything that we need in the day and the hour that we live, we need God to do it again. Lord. God, anoint us again, bless us again, exalt us again, give us your favor again. God, anoint us with fresh oil. Uh, the Holy Spirit and oil... Um, are used together throughout the Scripture. Oil represents the presence and the power of the Spirit of God throughout the Bible. Uh, Jesus was often referred to as the Anointed One, using oil as a metaphor for the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost of God being present and acting in Christ. 
among the more than 200 times that oil is mentioned in the Bible, the connection as a metaphor of the Holy Ghost's presence and action is clear in the ritual of anointing prophets, priests, and kings. Now I want to say this, every saved person uh, is anointed by the anointing one, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so listen, I believe that today we neglect this fresh anointing in our life. I believe in the day and hour that we live, there's been so much uh, misunderstanding, false teaching, uh, extreme ideas, abuse, when it comes to the third person of the Trinity. Uh, we know there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And if you read in your Bible, this is the dispensation of the capital S, Spirit. Jesus came and died. He sent the Spirit to empower the church to do the work of Christ when they face impossible circumstances. Right. And so we need this fresh anointing in our life. I know I do. I, I need God to anoint me fresh. I, I need God to do a fresh work in my life. I need God to give me a fresh vision, a fresh understanding, a fresh courage, a boldness, a, a, a desire for God in my life. And I believe that this is the hour that we really need to depend and lean into the work of the Holy Spirit of God in our life. I, I want to talk about this fresh oil tonight, and I want to just try to make some application uh, very simply tonight, maybe just some redneck type application, but I, I think it may can help you and I understand a little bit about this fresh oil and fresh anointing in our life. Uh, you know, whenever you run a vehicle, you need to make sure you got oil in it, right? You know, if you, you, you can have a nice $50,000 pickup truck, but if you don't keep oil in it, it ain't going to run right. It's going to have you some issues. And I looked the other day, you can buy a quart of oil for about $6.99, I guess. A quart of oil depends on what brand you get. But did you know that if you fail to put oil in the motor of your vehicle, it's going to break down? And as you know, if you run a vehicle without oil in it, ladies, if you run a vehicle without oil in it, gentlemen, uh, if you run a lawnmower without oil in it, a motorcycle, a weed eater, if you run some of that oil in it, it is going to tear the motor up. And did you know that to replace a motor in a vehicle will cost you and I a minimum of at least $7,000, a minimum? You know, there's some people that drive their vehicles and allow their uh, vehicle to run out of oil, and it blows that motor up. Listen, they got to spend seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars getting that motor fixed when all they had to do was spend six dollars and ninety-nine cents to keep it from breaking down. There's a lot of Christians running on the flesh. There's a lot of Christians running on the intellect. There's a lot of Christians that are neglecting this daily, fresh filling of God's oil in our life. And many Christians are breaking down. Many Christians are giving up. Many Christians are getting discouraged. And God says, hey, it does not have to be that way. There's fresh oil that I'll give and anoint your life to serve Jesus. Right. Look, you don't have to burn out. You don't have to burn up. You don't have to quit on God. You can see this thing through to the very end. No matter how dark it gets, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how heavy it gets, God can revive you and I every moment of the day. We don't have to have revival twice a year. We can have fresh oil, fresh anointing, fresh spirit of God in our life on a daily Amen. Basis. Let me give you a few things about oil tonight. I want to give you just some application. And I want you to know this. First of all, that about oil is oil lubricates. You know, when you put oil inside of the engine, that oil gets in all those gears and that oil allows the metal not to grind metal down and do damage on the interior of your motor. And when you put that oil on the inside, it gives a lubrication. It, it allows friction to build up. It allows the temperature to get hot but not destroy the engine. That oil is a lubricant that allows all the parts to work as they should without getting too hot 
and tearing up. You know, that's what the Holy Ghost does in the child of God's life. The Holy Ghost allows you and I to work hard for Jesus. He allows us to go long for Jesus. He allows us to make sacrifice for Jesus. He allows us to give for Jesus and to go for Jesus and not burn out all the way. Why? He keeps our minds and our hearts lubricated. He keeps the intensity from getting too high that it might destroy. Hey, you know we've been called to a supernatural job. We have been called a supernatural people and we're living in a natural body and the only thing that keeps us from getting too hot with friction and burning out is the anointing of that fresh oil and that lubricating work of the sweet Holy Ghost. Right. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 58. The Bible says this. I want you to hear what the Spirit of God says to the church. Therefore, my beloved brethren, can I just say tonight that you're loved by God tonight? And I just want I, you need to hear that tonight. Somebody needs to hear God is for you. God loves you. God's not abandoning you. He's not turned his back on you. God loves you with an everlasting love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And if God loved you and I enough to give us Jesus, would he not freely give us everything we need in life? My beloved brethren, this way he says, be ye steadfast. That means don't quit, don't back down, stay steady, stay strong, stay faithful. He says, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. He says, always abounding in the work of God. Did you know that is a demand on a Christian's life? That is a command on the Christian's life. That God says that we should be always abounding. That means above what we can do, above what we can offer, above what we can give. Why? Because the Holy Ghost lubricates the child of God to do what the world says. Man, how do they keep going? How do they keep believing? How do they keep praying? How do they keep doing this work? It's by that fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 again gives us a call to task. He says, and let us not be weary in well-doing. I believe some of you like me are getting weary in well-doing. Sometimes we look around and say, what's the point? How, is it really worth what we're doing? And have we lost our mind? Look, the world is going to make the believer think that we've lost our mind. The world is going to be so mounted against the church that we're going to think that we're the ones that are wrong. We're going to think that we're the ones that are crazy. And listen, I want you to know that we can't grow weary in well-doing life. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not, if we don't burn out, if we don't give up, if the friction doesn't get too high. Hey, listen, God's sweet, fresh oil will keep you lubricated. Don't worry about burning out. Don't worry about burning up if you're asking the fresh oil of God in your life on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. See, the Holy Spirit of God, that oil lubricates so that we can do the work of God. You know, that oil also lubricates the body of Christ because we can all do our part together as we're asking daily for fresh oil and fresh anointing to do the work. It keeps friction down amongst believers. It keeps conflict down amongst believers. It allows us to rub elbows and work together and sweat together and serve God together and still love each other at the end of the day. That's that lubricating work of the whole Holy Ghost, iron sharpening iron, and hitting each other, and striking each other, but God's building His church. We need fresh oil, amen? amen. Some of you are tired, you need fresh oil. Some of you are burnt out, you need fresh oil. Some of you, the heat and intensity is getting so hot in your life, you're getting overwhelmed and overtaken by the environment and circumstances and problems around you. You need to look up and ask for fresh anointing in your life. Number two, not only does oil lubricate, but number two, oil loosens. You know, when I was a kid, my dad would always send me and my brothers out to work on lawn mowers or finishing mowers or plows or whatever. And everything dad sent me to work on was rusted. <laughs> everything was rusted. And I'd go out there and I, I couldn't push for nothing. It was locked on there. 
And my dad would give me a can of oil. He said, now put your little oil on that bowl and that nut. Let it set for a moment and that oil will loosen up what gets stuck. You know, that sweet Holy Ghost, he, he loosens us from a few things. I, I'm glad that I can be loosened from some things. Sometimes I get stuck in a rut. Sometimes I get stuck in sin. Sometimes I get stuck in negativity. Sometimes I get stuck in gossip. Sometimes I get stuck in the news. And sometimes I need God to deliver me from what I get stuck in. I want you to see, first of all, the oil will loosen you and me from sin. I'm so glad that a fresh anointing today can loosen me from sin that besets me and sin that binds me and sin that holds me and sin that derails me. I'm glad that fresh anointing in my life can set me free. Set me free, I said, from sin in my life. You and I don't have to live in sin. We don't have to live bound by sin. Y'all can let me preach by myself if you want to. We don't have to live in sin, be identified by by sin, be controlled by sin, the Spirit of God can set us free. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. Listen to what the Spirit of God says here. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I'm so glad that I don't have to be dominated by the flesh. I'm glad I don't have to be dominated by sin. I, I'm glad that I can be free. Listen, some of us in here, sin has began to creep back in our life. Some of us in here, we've let the guard down. We've let the gate open. The walls have fallen down. And sin is starting to creep back in our lives and calling our name. What you need is to call upon Jesus and ask Jesus for fresh oil and fresh anointing in your life. You can be set free today by the sweet anointing of the Holy Ghost in your life. You don't have to live defeated. You can be filled fresh. Right now, today, oil doesn't only loosen some things, loosen us from sin, but I thank God that oil can loosen me from Satan's grip. Yeah. I tell you what, sometimes Satan and the devils of hell, they won't get you in sin, but they'll so cloud the mind and so blur the mind and so deceive the mind. Sometimes Satan will let you go off and get away from God and not do anything wrong, but just be not where you ought to be. It reminds me, there's a principle in Judges chapter number 14. The Bible tells us about a man named Samson. Samson was a man that was on a mission. He got some trouble on the way. But don't you see Judges 14 verses 5 and verse number 6. The Bible says in verse 5, Then went Samson down, and his father and his mother to Timnath, and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roared against him. Can I just say this? This lion represents Satan. And Samson was on his way. And we see that Satan came against Samson's life. Can I tell you again to echo what was said this morning? Satan is against your life. Right. He's prowling and watching and waiting and he's patient. He desires to have you. He desires to put you in prison and bind you up and take your joy and take your peace. And he, he desires to lock you down and keep you from serving God to make you feel like a prisoner, make you feel like you're defeated. But listen, a fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost can break Satan's grip. Yeah, Look what happens when this young lion comes out of the bushes to grab a hold of Samson. The Bible says in verse 6, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. We see that when Satan came to attack and get a hold of Samson, the Spirit of God gave him a fresh anointing, and he tore the enemy apart. I want you to know the devil may be playing games in your house. The devil may be playing games with your children. The devil may be playing games in your marriage or in your relationship. I want you to know a fresh anointing of God, a fresh filling of the Holy Ghost can loosen you from the grip of Satan. Listen, you don't have to live under Satan's lies. We don't have to live bound by sin and we can ask 
for a fresh anointing from God. Even when David cries out in this psalm and he asks for this fresh anointing, he's saying in the midst of David crying out for this fresh oil, he tells us that the enemy is prospering. He tells us that the devil's people are getting blessed. And it looks like they've got everything. But David said in the midst of that darkness, in the midst of that devilish activity, he said, hey, God, I need a fresh oil from you tonight. Yeah. Hey, he can anoint you and I fresh tonight. Boy, it makes it so easy to get freed up when you put some oil on them rusty bolts. May I just say this, you can't defeat sin, but the sweet Holy Ghost can. Yeah. Hey, you can't overcome Satan, but a fresh anointing of the third person of the Trinity can set you free from Satan's grip. You're no match for Satan. I'm no match for Satan, but the sweet Holy Ghost can whip him and defeat him every time. If we'll ask God to do it. We see here that oil, it, it lubricates. It keeps us from burning out. keeps us from getting too high. Keep us keeps us from getting too big of a load. We see that this sweet Holy Ghost and this fresh oil will loosen us from some things. Don't you see thirdly, oil also lights. Boy, it's a light. We, we, we out where we live, we... That live where Brother Dave and Miss Tammy used to live, and they, his son and her son, daughter-in-law, grandchildren, they left these little uh, tiki torches. You know what a tiki torch is? That just is a funny word, isn't it? Tiki. <laughs> what is tiki? Isn't that an app like Tiki Talk? <laughs> TikTok, yeah, tick, TikTok. Sorry, I, sorry. Anyway, you know I'm talking about, brother. TikTok, TikTok. Yeah. What was I doing? What was I saying? Oh yeah, we bought that house, and there were some tiki torches sitting outside. And I, there was a wick, and I took that top off, and there was no oil in it. So I lit the wick, and there was plenty of wick, but it wouldn't stay burning. So I raised the wick higher and I lit it and it kept burning out. And I said, well, I guess you, I, I thought the wick would just burn by itself. I didn't know you had to have oil. I thought it was like a sock. You just light your sock, it burns. <laughs> so I said, well, that, that, I didn't get my money back for the tiki torches. Yeah. So I got looking around and guess what I found in the garage? I found some tiki Torch oil. So I went and I found this tiki torch oil and I went outside and I took the top off and I poured the tiki, I'm going to get in trouble saying that word. Yeah. Pour the oil in the lamp and I lit the wick and I had that much wick that I had to back it back down and it was a huge flame. And did you know as long as there's oil in the canister, that thing will burn, baby, burn. Yeah. It'll burn. See, oil is what keeps the light burning in our life. You, know, you may be a believer here tonight and you say, you know what, I don't think my life is much of a witness. You know, I'm really not sure that people know that I'm a believer. You know, I'm really not sure that my life is counting for Christ. It could be that you've not had a fresh fill-up of that oil that comes from heaven. You know, Matthew 25, verses 6 and 8, it says, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. And then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. You know, I, I believe that some of us as Christians, we're, our lamps have gone out. I believe some of our lamps have gone out. We, we're not really shining. In other words, the world's comfortable around us. Can I, can I tell you something? It's a good sign. It's a good sign. Now, I, I don't think you've got to go around being preaching. I don't think you've got to go around with a bumper sticker and a bracelet and a necklace and earrings that say, I love Jesus. I don't, I don't think you've got to do all that. For people to know you've been with Jesus. Sometimes I think that is 
the people trying to make up for not being with Jesus. You know, they said about the disciples, they said these are unlearned men, but we know they've been with Jesus. And it wasn't because they had a bumper sticker. What because, and I ain't, I ain't against bumper. Please hear me. I'm not against. Don't get off that. I'm not against a bumper sticker or a t-shirt. I'm for them. I'll, I'll put one on. But they were filled with the Spirit of God. And the world said, you know what? Well, these men have been with Jesus. You know, when Moses came down from the mountain, they, they said his face shone with the Shekinah glory of God. He had fresh oil in his life. Fresh anointing from God. Yeah. You know, it's a good sign. It's a good sign when you're around people and you, you've not been braggadocious, you've not been preaching necessarily, you, you're not doing this, and all of a sudden they let a cuss word fly and they say, oh, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have said that around you. Amen. I always say, hey, you got to apologize to me. I mean, Jesus is with you everywhere you are. But there's something about sinners aren't comfortable acting like sinners around with people with a light shining. There's just something about when the light is shining, people... There's just something about it. They're not comfortable. I remember uh, one time I went to make a visit with a family in Kentucky. And uh, they, they had some stuff going on. If I told you what all I was doing over there, you'd think I was crazy. Well, I'll tell you a little bit. We, they, was bound up, they was bound up by sins and devils. So when they would leave for work, I would get my song leader and his guitar. And we'd go out to their property. We'd march around the property singing hymns. While they was gone. We, we just binding everything we could. We said, Dear Jesus, this family needs the gospel, but they can't hear. So what I would do is I would go to their house on Friday nights around 9 o'clock. And I would just sit on their porch and they'd sit there and they'd talk. And look, they never want, they'd be like, Well, it's getting kind of late. I'd say, I ain't got nowhere to be. <laughs> And they say, well, well, we got friends coming over. That's fine. I like people. I'd sit, and I'd sit on their porch. Friday night, so their buddies got paid, and I knew they was the drug dealers. So everybody was going to be coming there that day. So I'd go hang out. And this thing was unbelievable. A car would pull up. They'd walk up on the porch. And Anthony would, Anthony would say this. Oh, that's my pastor. <laughs> First word he said every time. And listen, no joke. They put the cigarette out. Throw their beard aside, they say, Oh, hey, Pastor, you know, I've been thinking about going to church, but I've not been to church in a while. And they start telling me, You know what? I cussed out my mother, and I can't believe I did this to my dad. And I start, and I say, Hey, look, I'm not the Pope. Why are you confessing? They, well, I, do, I just feel like I need to tell you what I've done wrong. And they get their drugs and leave. Usually they wouldn't get them, they'd leave. Then another car would pull up, and Anthony would say, Hey, uh, my pastor's here. And they say, oh, Pat, oh, I'm sorry for what I said. Uh, hey, uh, you know, I've really been thinking. Everybody's thinking about getting to church when they get rid of the light, ain't they? It's amazing. They all of a sudden know that what they're saying ain't right. They start apologizing for their language, for their attitude, for what they're drinking, for what they're eating. They start apologizing. Why is that? Because, hey, if we had fresh anointing in our life, and we were shining our light like Jesus said shine our light, the world would be under such holy ghost, spirit of God conviction, that they would have to either change or get away. Right. Paul said it this way, to some people you're the smell of life, and to some people you're the smell of death. And that's not because you're a jerk. Some people think you've got to be a jerk to be a witness. You, know, you can be sweet. You, you don't have to fake a light. When you've got a fresh anointing, there's just something about it. There's just something about it. Listen, we need this fresh oil in our life. Let me ask you this. I remember years ago when I first started preaching, I thought it was a compliment when sinners that were lost and didn't know God would say things like this. Oh, Brother Smith, you're, we like you. You're not like most pastors. I thought that was a compliment. Yeah. Yeah. You know what they were really saying? We like you because you don't make us feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And the truth makes people feel uncomfortable. Right. Hey, can I give you some advice? Can I, can I give you a little a, a, a headline? You want to listen real quick? Just, this may bust your bubble. Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. Mamas are going to be against daughters, and daddies are going to be against sons, and daughter-in-laws are going to be against mother-in-laws because the truth divides people. 
Hey, if you think being a light is going to bring unity, it will for saved people, but it divides and trims the fat off of the lost. Amen. He says, hey, you need this fresh anointing, this fresh oil in your life. I mean, I just say this, capital C, we need a fresh oil, a fresh anointing in our life so that the community says, wow, there's something real and right about that place. Yeah. Amen. Listen, we need this oil that lies. Let me finish with this and we'll be finished here. We see that oil it lubricates and loosens and lines. I want to finish with this. Oil also leaks. What's a bad thing? But oil leaks. It's amazing. Oil can find its way out of stuff. You got a leak in your rear universal joint, maybe. You look at your vehicle. It's probably got a little oil leaking out of the back, rear universal joint. If you drive an older vehicle. You may have a little oil down there at the bottom of your head gasket or somewhere around your oil pan somewhere, a little leak somewhere, a little wet spot. Maybe it may not leak in your driveway, but it runs down a little bit. Maybe a little leak coming out of the vacuum transmission into your, to, your, to wherever all that stuff is. <laughs> I'll bet if you get over this leak somewhere. I had a vehicle one time. It was drank oil, I think. And you, you just can't put oil in at one time and then be done. I did that in a lawnmower one time. You know, I, I thought, you know what, I put oil in it. I only use it like three months out of the year, once a week, sometimes twice a week. So, look, I put oil in it, and I said, hey, that's enough. And she you know, one hour I was driving that thing, went, complain, complain, ah! yeah. Smoke went everywhere, and I said, what? And I got mad at the lawnmower. I kicked the lawnmower. <laughs> you know, it's not. There. Oh. I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. That ain't a one-time event. We leak. We're leaky vessels. We're leaky vessels. In other words, you don't get filled in 1992 and stay filled until Christ comes. You don't get filled in 1986 when you got saved and, and you're filled until Christ comes. It, it's not a one-time event. It's not a one-time moment. I'm filled and I'm sealed. Hey, listen, you leak. We leak. All leaks out of us. We leak. We need to be filled on a regular basis. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. Here's what the Spirit of God says. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. I've got a question for you. What is the definition of drunk? I want you to think, what is the definition of drunk? Because we say, well, well, God just don't want us to be drunk. Well, what if God considers drunk one sip? Here's what I'm trying to say. Uh, I think being drunk is being under the influence of. Last time I checked, one sip, you're under the influence of it. Amen. He says, be not drunk with wine. That's alcoholic beverage. Amen? In other words, I'm against social drinking if you want to know. Amen. Amen. Because we got children watching lives. Hey, look, marriage is split up over alcohol. Right. Amen. Hey, children get abused over alcohol. People die in alcohol accidents. There ain't one thing good comes from alcohol. Not one. Not one thing good. But let me just say this. If you had fresh oil, you wouldn't need it. Amen. Fresh oil. This is fresh oil. Look, we're leak. be not drunk with wine wherein it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Yeah. And listen, this means be filled again and again and again and again. They're saved people. He didn't say that you've never been filled. He said, hey, all that matters is today be filled and continue be being filled. We're leaky vessels that must continue being filled. In other words, being filled with the Spirit is not a one-time event. We must have a fresh filling daily, fresh oil. Listen, the battle's long, church. The battle's long. We must have fresh oil to endure and to finish our race. 
Boo, this is not going to be a sprint. This is going to be a marathon. I, I wish I could tell you that Jesus was going to take us out of here before it gets too much worse, but it, I think it's going to be a marathon. Right. But if we try to run without oil, we'll break down. Don't neglect the fresh oil that God makes available to us. If we do, we'll break down before we cross the finish line. We'll break down, guys. You say, well, what do I have to do to be filled? What, what, what's the steps? What do I have to do to be filled? I'm glad you asked. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> glad you asked. It's a long explanation. It's a long explanation, but I'm going to give it to you. Luke 11, 13. It's for say, if you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, this is for you. If you be a man and evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your heavenly Father, this is saved people, your heavenly Father, he, he's not the heavenly Father of the lost. How much more shall your heavenly Father, watch this, give the Holy Spirit to them Amen. that ask you. Amen. You say, what do I got to do to have fresh oil? Ask. And listen, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, your father will give you that good gift, that good feeling of the Holy Spirit of God. Listen, the, the Spirit, being filled with the Spirit, is not for the pastor, it's not for the music minister, it's not for the Sunday school teacher, it's not for the choir director or the bass player only. It's for every saved person. It's for, every, it's for the security guard, it's for the athlete. It's for the widow. It's for those with a job and had a job. Even those who work for the gas company, it's for them too. Brother Dave, I think it's even for delivery people. Miss Tammy, it's for cancer survivors. It's for teenagers. It's for mothers. It's for singles. It's for every saved person. David said, my horn shall be exalted. And he shall give us fresh oil. Yes, amen. Hey, I just want to ask you, when's the last time you asked God for fresh anointing? Mm -hmm. When's the last time you verbally say, God, I need a fresh anointing in my life? You say, well, I don't remember how long this has been. Well, today, why not today? Well, let's do this one. A little bit of invitation. Can we do that, Brother Bia?